Earlier this year, we released a video about Facebook ad placement strategies. And in that, I get a little bit on my soapbox about how it really bothers me that most advertisers don't use all the placements on the Facebook network. And one of the reasons that they don't is because they just don't think that their ads look good in all the placements. So today, what I wanna talk about are the free tools in the Facebook Business Manager platform that will allow you to customize your ads for different news feeds, for stories, all of the different placements around the Facebook ad network. So your ad will look great no matter where it is. Let's hop in. This video is brought to you by Shape, an all-in-one PPC budgeting solution designed for you to control, organize, and collaborate on PPC ad spend at scale. Ready to start saving some time? Check out the link below to learn all about Shape. In Facebook Ads Manager, whenever you go and click on edit for each of your individual ads, you'll get the right side builder that pops up. This account looks a little bit different than some of the other accounts that I'm in. This is just a blank staging account that we've got. So there's usually a big gray bar that has all the previews that shows up about right here. But for this account, for some reason, they have this new version, I think this is new, or maybe they're just beta testing, of expand previews. So I'm just gonna click that. And then it'll load all of the previews for all of the different ad placements around Facebook. So you can see what your ads would look like on each of these individual placements, whether it's looking at Instagram Explore, if you're starting to look at stories, except for the fact that Facebook for some reason isn't loading the image. But then you can see all the way down, you can see the versions that it's not going to show up for. So in-stream videos, but then search versions, in-article, you get it. So it starts to show all of the different previews that you have. And you'll notice that whenever I hover over each of these, it gives me a little pencil to customize. And that's gonna open the builder that we're gonna talk about a little bit more here in just a second. But the one way I know we can edit these for every account, regardless of what the preview looks like, is when you scroll down in the right side builder in Facebook ads, you can click this drop down and select a placement to customize right under the media that you have on that ad. The first thing you'll notice is that there are some really easy groups that are already in here. Feeds, stories, apps, and sites, and then right column, search results, blah, blah, blah. All of the rest of the different placements. It's really helpful that Facebook breaks these apart for you in different groups because you can go through and customize each individual placement, whether it's Facebook newsfeed, Instagram newsfeed, all for mobile, desktop, all this kind of stuff. But a lot of those, you're probably gonna use the same image, the same text, all the different things. So this group lets you edit different placement groupings all at once. So you don't have to edit each feed individually. You can just edit it once and the different placements will use it. The five different news feed placements will use that exact same version that you just created. So it's super helpful if you only wanna do things once. But here's the thing. There's also some things that are a little bit different if you edit things individually versus doing it as a group. So first let's talk about how we can edit news feeds since those are pretty much always the same whether you do it in the group or individually. And then we'll hop into some of those other use cases. Okay, so starting off with feeds, let's just say we want to edit all the feeds. So we'll click on that. And then it'll pop up this builder that we have here. And the first thing you'll see is at the top here, you can actually choose a drop down to see the different news feed pieces that are going to use this version that you're creating. You can then click on one of them if you want to use that as the viewer that you're actually seeing over to the side, but I'm just going to leave it on mobile news feed for now. To the left of this editor is where you'll start to be able to customize. First thing you can do is you can change the image. So if you open this up, any of the other images you have in the account will populate and you can utilize those to your heart's content. Or you can start to use any videos or upload something, whatever you want to do here. Next thing is to crop the image that you have. Every time you use crop, Facebook will always give you an option of the original version, but then it'll also populate different instances and different crops of the image you have just set up by default. And there will always be one that is recommended. If possible, always use the recommended size for each of these different placements. It's really gonna impact how much of the screen, whether it's desktop or mobile phone or whatever, it's really gonna impact how much of the screen your image takes up. And it's really just gonna look better if you use the recommended size. This is one where Facebook really is trying to get you to use the one that does look better and makes your brand look the best in each placement. So for this, I'm going to use square because that's what it's recommending. And it'll bring up this grid 
and it's pretty easy to use. You can just click in the middle of it and start to drag over. So if we wanna do just the left side, just the right side, whatever your image entails, you can also grab one of the squares and make it a little bit smaller, but it'll always keep the dimensions square. I can't make it anything other than square. That's pretty helpful. They keep the dimensions in place for you and all you have to do is just hover over whichever piece you want and then you're all set. The next thing you can do are to adjust the text. So you can adjust the primary text. It does give you a warning that it won't show up in in all of the locations. But right now I just have placeholder primary text so it shows you what comes up there. But if you wanted to adjust the text based on the different device that people are using or something along those lines, you can do that. Same thing with headline. If for whatever reason you wanna change the headline that shows up in any of these things, you can do that. And then lastly, you can change the link that people are coming through. So there's a display URL that's optional that it shows you, but you can also then change the website URL itself. So if for some reason you want to send somebody to a certain page of your site because maybe you've changed the image on the ad or you've changed the text. If you want to send them to a different URL, you can also do that here without having to create a new ad in your ad set or creating a new ad set to target different things by placement. So it can really kind of help keep things all organized in one line item in the Facebook interface. So now I'm done with newsfeed, I'm just gonna click save and be done with that. And now you'll notice in the media portion of the ad that there are two line items here. So one is using nine placements or using this image. And when you hover over this, it'll show you the placements that are using the original image. But then down below here, you can see the placements that we just customized and it's using it in four different ones. So that's gonna be in Facebook newsfeed, marketplace, Instagram feed, and Instagram explore, cause that's the one that we just created. And you can tell from just this preview here that this is a square version of the image and this one is more of the original because it's a little bit more landscape it's got the white space around it so now the next placements that I want to customize are going to be the stories placements because those have quite a lot of things that we can do here and they have some different tools that newsfeed doesn't have so I want to dip into those just a bit so first let's start to edit these as a group so we can come into stories apps and sites and then you'll see that we have a number of the same sort of things here. We've got the preview set up for Instagram stories because for some reason today, Facebook stories won't populate my image. So I wanted you guys to see what this looks like. We can then do the same thing. We can change the image crop the image, we can change primary text and the link that's in there. So all that's the same as the news feed. So nothing really different there when you edit stories as a bulk group. But if you go in and you edit stories individually, you'll see that there are a number of additional tools that we can add that I think you should really take advantage of. So let's exit out of this. And then I'm gonna come back to this dropdown and instead of clicking this bulk group of stories, I'm actually just gonna scroll down to Instagram stories. Now you can see that the builder has quite a few more things over here on the left. We still have the typical change image, crop image, primary text, and link. But the next thing you'll notice is that there is background color on here. One of the things that Instagram always does, you'll notice whenever they create a story for you out of your image, they try and put together some sort of colorful background that looks decent with your image. So it'll try and match the top portion color to a top portion gradient and then bottom color to a bottom color in a gradient. And it may or may not look good depending on what your root image is. This doesn't look bad, but it's also not that great to be honest. So you can come in here and if you click on the background color, you can choose solid and then you can choose whatever color you want on the background. So let's just say we want this strange brown color to show up as our background color. It'll show up solid across the back. You'll still see a little bit of black kind of fading in and out there, but for the most part, it shows up solid. You can then do the same with gradient, which is what it started us with, but we have the same preset colors to where the top will show up as the lighter portion of the brown and the bottom will show up as the darker portion of the brown. For both of these, solid and gradient, there's gonna be a gray plus sign down here at the bottom. And you can then choose on the gradient, you can choose what you want your top color and bottom color to be. And you can adjust it based on the different colors down here on the color scale. And it'll eventually pop up the preview of the different color schemes that you have in place. So that obviously looks horrible, so we wouldn't do that. But then you can do the same thing on the solid side and choose whatever solid color you want to show up in the back. So you can really customize this wherever you want it. If you decide that you really just want to go back to whatever the basic colors were that that Instagram slash Facebook came up with. There's always this pencil up here that's gonna be the first option. If you click that, that's basically the smart option and that's where Facebook is gonna take its cues from the colors that are in your photo and it's going to apply the color 
background that it wants to do there. You can always revert back to the option that Facebook had. Even if you start clicking around here, you decide you don't like it, you can always go back. Now, the last thing is where things get really interesting and really exciting. And this is you can use for Instagram, Facebook, and any of the other stories placements. You can click on template up here at the top. And once you click into this template thing, you'll start to notice that there are lots of, what do you know? templates that you can choose from. These are going to be, from my anecdotal experience, customized by the different account that you're in or the different photo that you're using, something like that, because some of these I personally have never seen before. The nice thing is that you can just click on one of these and it'll populate off to the right, but it'll basically make an actual template. It will make something dynamic. A designer has put time into this. And yes, our lone image of delicate arch in Utah might look a little bit goofy here, but there's a lot that you can do with having this template in the background that just has more movement to it. It has more branding to it. So there are a lot of different templates that I showed you. You can click each of these and see what it looks like. I'm just going to stick with this one because quite frankly, today this interface is loading really slowly and it's already loaded. So we're going to keep going with it. You then still have the option to change and crop the image. And then you can start to change the link that you have. You can change the headline and you can change the primary text. Some of these I've seen before, the primary text on them is so long that it starts to get cut off and it runs into this learn more call to action over here. So this might be a good way to try and truncate or shorten or just adjust your primary text so it fits in with the new template that's in here. Make sure that everything looks good. Now down here at the bottom, you can still change the background color. So you can see here that it's this light blue. If for some reason I want it to be this super hot pink, then we can do that over here as well. I guess this is more of a salmon, whatever. You guys are fine. So now you can see that you can customize this a little bit. It's not perfect, but there is some changes that you can make here. Now, one of the next things I want to do is going to be for, I'm going to actually turn the volume down a little bit. So hopefully it doesn't blow out your ears. But one of the cool things is you can actually choose music to add to these as well. And they have these different mood groups that you can choose from. And then let's just say we want to choose this top one as the music that goes along with it. I'm going to choose it and then let it play. Let's say that that's fine. You can see the scroll bar on the side is showing everything. And now I'm hitting mute because the one frustrating thing with this is that you can't then uncheck whatever music option you choose. Once you're in this section and you've chosen one, you can't really unchoose it until you go back to background color and then you can highlight over this music thing and then hit trash can. If you choose music, just know that it's going to play that same six second loop for you over and over and over again until you are done. So I would highly suggest choosing your music last. Otherwise, you're going to get really, really sick of it. The last thing you can choose is a call to action effect, and these are pretty cool. You can hover over each of them and it'll show you any of the movement that will have available for each of those. And then let's just go ahead and add one to the ad and let it populate. Okay, so we've chosen these three little lines and you can see down here right above this learn more call to action, every once in a while these three little lines pop up and it just adds a little bit more movement. It helps to draw the eye down to that call to action a little bit more and might help people click through. You can then, in the same way that you can with a lot of other things, you can edit the actual color of that effect. If I just wanna change it to, let's say black, now those lines show up as black. So you can blend it in with whatever the call to action button looks like based on the different background colors and all that sort of thing. So there is a little bit of customization here. Same thing with adding a different color based on whatever you wanna customize here. So there's a lot that you can do with those call to action pieces. Then whenever you're done, you just click save. I'm not gonna do that because it's gonna take forever to save. But when you would get done with that, it would then come back and show another line item here. And it would say that this is being customized for Instagram stories. Each of the times you create a new placement or group of placements that is customized different from the original, different from the other groups. There's always going to be a different box here where your media is that you'll have a little preview of. And if you ever need to go back and change something that you've already saved, there'll be a pencil button here that you can click edit and it'll bring that same builder back up so you can edit it in the exact same way that you did before. If you ever just want to get rid of it and go back to everything being on the original and you want a clean slate, all you have to do is click this little X and it'll go away and you'll notice again that it says 13 placements are using this image and it'll show you then all of the placements that are using that image again. And that's it. It might take a little bit of time to go in and customize your ads by placement, but it'll make all of your ads look a lot better branding wise. You'll be more confident in what your ads look like. And it'll also help them blend into the platforms a lot more naturally. So from the consumer side, they won't feel like they're being sold to and they'll actually enjoy engaging with the brands that are on the network.
Thanks for watching our video. If you thought it was useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week, so if you want to get notified of when a new one comes out, be sure to subscribe to the Paid Media Pros channel.